the Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. I was dining with some friends the other night, and here's a very funny thing. There was more conversation about Junior's diet and what he ate for breakfast. Then it turned out that the husband, the head of the house, the big provider, if you want to get mercenary about it, never ate breakfast at all. <laughs> now that's all wrong. Dietitians tell us that we all need an adequate breakfast, and one that includes cereals with whole grain nourishment. That means cereals like swell-tasting grape nuts and grape nuts flakes. Both are basic seven foods with whole grain food values, so they're chock-a-block full of nourishment, and boy, are they good to eat. Mm-mm. There's zest in every moldy, rich mouthful. Grape nuts, crisp and crunchy. Grape nuts flakes and toasty brown flake form. So eat a good breakfast, folks, and you'll do a better job. And help yourself to plenty of grape nuts and grape nuts flakes. They're good. gentlemen, today we're broadcasting from the Marine Corps Air Station in the Mojave Desert. And this week they're celebrating the 168th anniversary of the founding of the Marine Corps. So without further ado, we bring you a man... Hmm. Jack, Jack, did they get you? No, no, Don, I'm all right. Oh, good. For, for a minute I thought they spoiled my opening speech. No, don't be ridiculous, Don. They weren't shooting at me. Go ahead with the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, as this is the 168th anniversary of the founding of the Marine Corps, without further ado, we bring you a man... <laughs> hmm. Jack, did they get you this time? Don, don't be silly. I told you they weren't shooting at me. Now go ahead. Okay. So without further ado, we bring you a man with two holes in his hat, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, what just happened was purely accidental. You see, the boys are having their aerial target practice. I was getting tired of wearing this straw hat anyway. <laughs> well, boys, I can't tell you how happy I am to be here on the week of your 168th anniversary, the day which commemorates the founding of... <laughs> Don... Don, it is a little dangerous around here. Will you please close the window? Okay, Jack. Uh, thanks. As I started to say, fellas, I can't tell you how happy I am to be here on your 168th anniversary. <laughs> Don... Don, will you please pull down the shade? <laughs> and while, uh, while you're at it, you better go over and close the screen door, you know? But, Jack, a screen door won't stop the bullets. I know, but it'll sift out the big ones. <laughs> anyway, Don, this is a nice camp, even if it is a bit noisy. It's very picturesque out here in the Mojave Desert. Yes, and... <laughs> it's a romantic spot, too, Jack. <laughs> you know, just a little way from here is the famous Golden Queen Gold Mine. Oh, really? Yes, Jack. They only recently, they took out $8 million worth of gold. Imagine that. Well... Of course, right now, they're not operating it, and all that gold is just lying around. Is that so? Well, I'd probably get excited about her if I was the type that was interested in gold. 
Anyway, Don, there are more important things to talk about. You see, this being the week of the 168th anniversary of the Marines, we are going to... Hmm, he's got that bullet on a yo-yo. <laughs> Let's cut the string and go on with the program. Huh? You know, Don, one thing I like about playing these different camps is... Oh, oh, hello, Mary. Oh, hello, Jack. Oh, boy, am I winded. <laughs> Mary, Mary, what's the matter with you? Why are you so out of breath? Well, I just came over here from the PX. The PX? Why, well, that's... That's just a short walk from here. I know, but it's a fast run with 150 Marines chasing him. <laughs> now, Mary, don't be silly. Marines don't chase after girls. <laughs> oh, no? No. Since when are large butterfly nets part of their equipment? <laughs> Look, Mary, you've got nothing to worry about. The boys here are a nice bunch of fellas. They're just a little playful, that's all. <laughs> You're not kidding. They wanted me to play hide-and-seek with them. They told me to hide, and they'd try and find me. Well, why didn't you play with them? You used to enjoy that game when you were a kid. Yeah, but when I was a kid, we didn't play finders keepers. <laughs> oh. oh, 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 oh. Well, anyway, Mary, you got away from those Marines, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, Livingston, you fool girl, you. <laughs> Well, don't worry about it, Mary. Maybe next time you'll stumble. I did this time, and they picked me up and gave me another head start. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, forget about it. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. I want to get this program off to a good start because this is the Marines' 168th Say, birthday. Say, Jack, huh? how'd you get those holes in your hat? What happened? Oh, it was nothing, Mary. Some of the boys were having aerial target <laughs> practice and probably mistook me for a target. It was just a quirk of circumstances, you know? Gee, that's awful. <laughs> what are you laughing at? As a result of quirk, bullet hits jerk. Mary, stop being so clever. Those are the kind of jokes that went out with Fred Allen. Boy, am I glad he's through with radio. I knew he'd be washed up. But, Jack, I read in the paper yesterday that Allen's coming back on the air. So did I. No. When is he coming back? Oh, about the middle of December. Well, he ought to be ashamed of himself, spoiling everybody's Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, fellas. <laughs> Heaven bless you, fellas. Heaven bless you. Imagine that guy. Stop turning white. I'm not turning white. It just burns me up, that's all. Then stop turning red. Oh, quiet. I just can't understand Alan getting another chance in radio. Now, wait a minute, Jack. After all, there are lots of people who'd rather listen to Fred Allen's program than yours. Oh, they, uh, they would, eh? Yes. Don, there's an old Chinese mm. proverb that says, when Big Fat Announcer opened Big Fat Mouth, he soon find Big Fat Salary, A-W-O-L. <laughs> And I have a good mind to pay you one week So you'll know what I mean <laughs> You've been with me long enough to realize How I feel about that Hmm Jack, pick up your hat Hmm Jack, pick up your hat Listen, sister, I'm not stooping over Till things quiet down <laughs> Anyway, I don't know why they have target practice right in the... Well, look who's here. Hiya, Jackson. All right, boys. <laughs> well, looks like I got to do it anyway. Applause me, man. Applause me. <laughs> applause you. Applause you. What is that? Applause you. <laughs> applause me. Well, Bill, I'm glad you finally got here. You can help us celebrate the Marines' 168th birthday. 168 years old? Them kids? 
Well, I don't mean individually. They're 168 years old as they stand as a group. Well, brother, at that age, you've got to stand in a group or your landing gear will fold up. <laughs> Phil, have you got your own writer or is he paying you to keep it quiet? No kidding, didn't you ever go to school? What for? Going to school is just a lot of red tape so you can eat your lunch away from home. <laughs> now look, Phil. Uh, don't mind me, boys. I'm just standing here because I'm beautiful. I'm sorry, Mary. Oh, hello, Mary. Say some of the Marines out here are mad at you. What did you do? Oh, the boys aren't really mad. I just wouldn't play hide and seek with them. Well, they sure seem to have it in for you. Oh, Phil, don't be ridiculous. Well, all I know is there's a sign outside of one of them buildings that says infirmary. That's infirmary! <laughs> infirmary. Oh, brother, it now Phil. Don't. <laughs> Don't, don't drive me nuts all together. Just walk over to the bandstand and give us a... Ha, ha, ha! Missed me. Before you said that, you had a cigar in your mouth. Oh, yes, play, Phil. It was a good one, too, a ten-cender. You know that? <laughs> and his orchestra having a musical argument in which the listeners lost. <laughs> Say, Phil, I notice, I notice you were able to lead your orchestra tonight. Your arm isn't stiff anymore. Yeah, for three days I couldn't bend it, but it's all right now. The doctor fixed it up. Oh, what was it? Nothing. I had my baton up my sleeve and didn't know it. <laughs> oh, well, it must have been awful not to be able to bend your elbow. Yeah, I nearly died of thirst. <laughs> I can imagine, huh? Well, I... I should never have said bend your elbow, that I knew. Well, I'm glad you're okay. And now, folks... Say, Jack, uh, I meant to ask you something. How'd you make out at the gold mine? Gold mine? What gold mine? Why, Jack, you know, the Golden Queen mine I told you about just a few minutes ago. Oh, yes, yes, there is a gold mine near here, but let's get on with the program. I'm not... I'm not interested in it, you know? Stop kidding. You didn't bring that pick up here just to crack ice. <laughs> Mary, that's not a pick. Well, your tie pin certainly has a long handle on it. <laughs> Mary, please believe me, I'm not interested in that gold gold mine. Now let's let's <laughs> now let's get on with the show. Jackson, what are you so sore about? I saw you sneaking into that mine this morning. I thought it was an air raid shelter and shut up. <laughs> your orchestra was rehearsing. I had to go someplace. And now, fellas, since this is the uh, 168th anniversary of your... Uh, oh. Hmm. Oh, Jack. What? The cigar's back in your mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I've had enough of this. I'm going to put a stop to it right now. Oh, Colonel Adams! Colonel Adams! Oh, Jack. You keep out of this, Mary. What is it, Mr. Benny? 
Uh, Colonel Adams, believe me, I, I hate to be a tattletale. <laughs> oh, really, I hate to be a tattletale, but your boys are having aerial target practice, and three or four times I've almost been hit. Well, I can't understand it, Mr. Benny. They're shooting according to the written rules. I'm not concerned about the boys who are shooting according to the rules, but that guy who's ad-libbing has me worried sick. <laughs> Well, I appreciate how you feel, Mr. Benny, and I'll go right out and tell them to stop it. Well, I hate to put you that trouble, Colonel Adams. Are you sure they'll do as you ask? Oh, I think they will. Those pilots like to humor me. Oh. <laughs> I see. Well, I'll certainly appreciate it if you'll, uh... For heaven's sake, Colonel, will you please hurry out there and tell them? Wait till I pick up my hat. <laughs> Thank you, Colonel. Boy, I'm glad I left my hat off, although I hate to spoil their fun. And now, fellas... Hmm. Oh, Jack, pick up your hair. <laughs> well, I'm glad the Colonel's gonna put a stop to this. And now, fellas, you may not know it, but since this is the week of the 168th anniversary... Hello, Mr. Benny. ...of the... Oh, hello, Dennis. Well, well, kid, it's about time you got here. Uh, what's been keeping you? Oh, I've been down to that place you told me not to mention. And boy, is it full of gold. <laughs> Dennis, I don't even know what you're talking about. And now, fellas... You told me if I brought back two buckets full, I could keep the handles for myself. <laughs> Dennis, I told you I don't know what you're talking about. And now, fellas... You even put your arm around me when you talked me into it. Dennis, will you please be quiet? Gee, you're fickle. What an imagination that kid's got. Oh, Jack, why do you keep denying that you're trying to work that mine? Mary, I'm not working anything. I told you I thought it was an air raid shelter. Then what was Dennis digging for? For exercise. Well, he brought back two buckets full. All right, bucket full, bucket full. And as pretty a sight as you've ever seen. Nice golden nuggets. Each one a treasure in itself. Don, will you please stop talking about gold? Gold? I'm talking about grape nuts flakes. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, oh. ladies and gentlemen, they're toasty brown, sweet as a nut, and have that malty rich flavor. Burns me up. After all, a mine does look like an air raid shelter. Say, know. Mr. Benny. Grape nuts flakes bring you whole grain food values <laughs> and are not ration. Whole grain, whole grain, whole grain. And grape nuts flakes are a thrifty buy in the big 12 ounce economy size package. Say, Mr. Wilson. You said it, Don. And now, fellas. Say, Miss Livingston. This being the 168th anniversary. Jack, what about that gold mine? Mary, stop interrupting Don. And now, fellas... Don't mind me. I'm just standing here because I'm pretty. <laughs> Dennis, you're standing there because in a few minutes you'll be doing a song in honor of the 168th anniversary... Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes, Colonel Adams. You needn't worry about that target practice anymore. From now on, there'll be no more shooting. Good, good. There'll just be trial runs with our speed planes. Oh, just speed planes. Well, that's fine. Thank you, Colonel Adams. I'm glad you... <laughs> There goes one now. Oh, yes, yes. Those planes are fast, aren't they? Gee, you can hardly tell. <laughs> See them, huh? <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks very much, Colonel Adam. You're welcome. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Benny, before I go, would you do something for me? Yes, anything at all. As a little favor to the Marines, would you please mention that this is the week of their 168th anniversary? <laughs> I'll see if I can squeeze it in. Goodbye, Colonel. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, Dennis, let's have your song now. Okay, Mr. Benny. And sing it with a lot of feeling because... Because I have a lot of friends in the audience. I wish they wouldn't fly so low, really. <laughs> Look. 
Looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. All the cattle are standing like statues. All the cattle are standing like statues. They don't turn their heads as they see me ride by. But a little brown maverick is winking her eye. Oh, what a beautiful morning. What a beautiful day I got a beautiful feeling Everything's wonderful Everything's beautiful Everything's going morning sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, you sang very well for the boy. You really have a golden voice. I should. My mouth's full of nuggets. <laughs> oh, well, how much can he eat? Yeah. And now, fellas, this being the... Come in. <laughs> well, now they're getting polite. They knock first. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly, Jack There's a Marine at the door Oh, oh, yes Mr. Benny? Yes I'm Miss Sergeant Gillis Oh, how... <laughs> how do you... How do you do, Sergeant Gillis? My job is to see that you're well taken care of during your visit here Now, is there anything special you'd like for dinner? Well, um, let me see uh, could you hurry it up, Mr. Benny? I gotta go around and ask all the Marines what they'd like for dinner <laughs> Oh, I see. Well, that's nice. What do the boys usually order? Oh, some of them order crepe Suzettes. Uh-huh. Others prefer filet mignon saute with wine sauce. <laughs> I see. And there are those who are partial to baked pheasant under glass. Oh. And after you get the orders, you give them to the chief cook? No, first I give them to the interpreter. I see. And after the interpreter gives them to the cook, what do the boys finally get? Well, well... Think now, think. What do the boys finally get? Well... Uh-uh. No coaching from the audience, please. <laughs> well, well, let's see. I'm sorry your time is up, but a box of grape nuts flakes to the man who sent in that question. What is this, anyway? I've got a man here in the third row, Doctor. What? And I've got a lady up here in the balcony, Doctor. For heaven's sake, stop already. What kind of a silly routine is this? Now cut that out! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Sergeant Gillis. What is it really you really wanted to see me about? Well, I'm also on the camp newspaper, Mr. Benny, and I wanted to... Uh... Oh, by the way, I meant to ask you, on your trip overseas, did you happen to run across a cousin of mine in North Africa? A cousin? Well, I don't know. He's a corporal. Oh, his name doesn't start with a C, does it? No, with a K. Good. Crowley. Oh. <laughs> no. He cracks his knuckles. Knuckles a lot. lot. Funny oh, you didn't, didn't hear me. I know, I know, I know. But look, Sergeant Gillis, you said you wanted to see me about something. Now, what is it? Well, as I said, I'm on the paper here, and I'd like to get your reaction to our camp. Uh, did you visit the Golden Queen Mine? Yes, I did happen to drop in there by chance. In fact, I, I saw a bit of it. You mean you left a bit of it. <laughs> Mary, stop making things up. If I was digging for gold, where are my blisters? <laughs> 
Mr. Benny, if you're looking for him, I got him. <laughs> now, wait a minute, kids. I've had just about enough. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Hello, Miss Livingston. This is Rochester. <laughs> Chester. Hello, say Miss Livingston, I'd like to speak to the boss, please. Okay, where are you? Mr. Benny doesn't want me to mention it, but if you'll just tell him I'm in the subway, you'll understand. Oh, <laughs> uh -ho. Jack, your private underground movement is calling you. What? You don't have to keep it a secret anymore, we know. All right, all right, so you know. With all the trouble I have, it's a wonder I'm not gray. <laughs> Give me that phone. Hello? Hello? Oh, blood and guts? <laughs> yes? This is old pick and shovel. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do you want, Rochester? Boss, I've been digging and digging, and have I got good news for you? What is it? You know what you've always wanted to tell your sponsor? Yes. Well, you're rich enough to tell him now. <laughs> Rochester, my sponsor and I are good friends, and stop wasting valuable time. So you found some gold nuggets, eh? Yes, sir. This place is loaded with Morgenthau marbles. <laughs> good, good. Now get to work. But I gotta stop digging once in a while. My hands are cold, and I can't get them warm. You can't? No, you shouldn't have sewed up my pockets, boss. <laughs> well, Rochester. Rochester, the reason I did that is because I wanted to help you resist temptation. Why don't you let me and temptation slug it out on even terms? <laughs> because I know you'd throw the fight. Now, listen, Rochester. Just a second, boss. Dig over there, will you, honey? <laughs> Rochester, have you got a girl down there? Rochester, have you got a girl down there? Empty your pockets, honey, this may be television <laughs> Rochester, answer me, who's down there with you? It's my sweetie, she's helping me dig Well, I'll be... Rochester, how did you get your girl to go down in the mine? Psychology, boss, I told her it was the tunnel of love <laughs> Oh, well, look, Rochester, keep digging for another 12 hours, then you can call it a day. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? I hope you won't be mad at me, but while I was digging for that gold, I had a piece of bad luck. What was it? I struck oil. <laughs> oh, darn it. Well, look, Rochester, just use the oil to wash over the gold and uh, wash off the gold and cheer up. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Good old Rochester. <laughs> Now, one thing about Rochester, he's always willing to work. But, Mr. Benny... What is it, Sergeant Gillis? You can't take that gold away from here. Hmm? Hmm? Why, that's federal property. It belongs to Uncle Sam. It does? Well, that's swell. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Play, <laughs> Phil. Never a day goes by, but what we read in the papers about food shortages and rising prices, and many a harried homemaker is looking around for the answers. Well, fortunately, indeed... Cereals are plentiful, not rationed, and thrifty. So plan to serve more cereals, such as delicious grape nuts and grape nuts flakes. Both of these tempting, molly rich cereals provide whole grain food values. That makes each one a basic seven food. For Uncle Sam's nutrition program features cereals with whole grain nourishment as a daily must. Grape nuts and grape nuts flakes provide some of the food essentials of meat, cheese, and other rationed foods. So when you serve these two luscious cereals, you're giving your family pleasure plus profit. Grand eating and grand nourishment. Grape nuts and grape nuts flakes are each a thrifty buy. Get some tomorrow. Delicious, nutritious, economical, and a real treat. Uh, congratulations on your 168th birthday, fellas. So long, everybody. Good night. <laughs> 